We showed you one of these at the farm show last year. Well, one very similar to this anyway. But that's nothing like seeing one in action. So I'm excited about what we're gonna try out here today. This is one of these extendable flail mowers. It's got a big long boom on it. I'm pretty excited about this. This one's made by Maschio Gaspardo out of Italy. You've seen us show several of their attachments. I always think their attachments are of the highest quality. Just the details are thought through. I'm always impressed. This is not a high speed attachment by any sense of the imagination. It's uh, got a lot of controls. Um, for the most part, these have to be controlled manually. Uh, the angle of the um, actual cutter head can be in float, and I've got it in float right now. But the rest of these have to be controlled manually. So the best thing to do is, at least for me, is to take my time here, and especially as the tractor's going through a lot of these ditches and stuff. Here's little trees I can handle. Lower that. Yeah, some of these ditches are kind of almost out of control. I'm going to have to do something to fill these in. Maybe I'm going to have to put some riprap along here or something. I'm just worried that riprap's going to get full of grass and I'm not going to like mowing it, so not sure what I'm going to do about that. There's some rocks here that I really don't want the mower getting into, so I may raise it up a little bit. See if I can avoid them. That's just what I'm talking about, about riprap, you know? These aren't big enough to be riprap, but. Go out a little wider here for my second pass. Pretty good visibility, even though it's a, a behind you attachment, it's not really behind you, it's kind of more out to the side. So the visibility is not as bad as you might think. The one thing I would say is that the ROPS is right in the middle of it. So I have to decide whether I'm going to look on the front side or the back side of the ROPS. So stay with us in this episode. We'll uh, stop and show you some of the, the features of the mower and walk through a little bit closer here in a few minutes. But first, I want you to see it mow. I want to see it mow myself. Getting right down in there. There's a rock down there I'm trying to avoid. And I did. I think I may have to tighten up my um, stabilizers here on the three point hitch to get that swing controlled a little bit better. Okay, it's the biggest tree I've got to deal with. Let's see if we get it. Ponds are difficult to deal with. Just difficult to, to keep clean. You've got a few different choices. I, I guess I'd enjoy hearing your choices uh, in the comments section. How do you how do you keep your pond up? Do you do you try to mow along it like this? Uh, do, you, do you put rock into it and spray it? What? How do you keep your pond banks looking good? Now, it would be a lot easier, of course, if I could get the water to stay up at this level right along the top. I don't know if I can do that on this pond. I really don't. Um, there's several reasons. We could talk about that in other episodes, and I already have some. But I'm just taking it for granted right now that the water level is going to fall to where it is in this pond. I don't really have much choice about that. It's working pretty good. I'm pretty impressed with this so far. Let's see, up a little. This one, this lever is backwards to me. I feel like I have to press it down to go up. I'm really only controlling one of the valves right now. Uh, that's all I can keep my head on, right? I mean, they're, 
I'm not worrying about getting wider or narrower. I'm trying to handle that with the tractor. I'm just controlling essentially the up and down of the, of the boom here, this one right here, see? That's really, I suppose it's my capability level with this machine right now. There's just a lot of things going on. Now the boom's fully extended. Um, so that's that's all we've got extension-wise. Oops, I'm missing it. It's harder for me to drive when it's fully extended. Uh, what I mean is it's hard for me to position the mower. I put this on the 2038R because that was the tractor that I thought would be the smallest that would handle this mower effectively. I was certain that the 3R would handle it fine, so I wanted to try what I thought was the smallest, just to see how it felt. I really don't think a 1025R would be suitable for this machine, not because of power. I'm not feeling any power issues at present, but I, I, it does feel heavy when it's out. I don't really feel tipsy with this tractor, but I think I would with a 1025R. Probably see those big rocks down there, maybe now. Let's see why I'm a little hesitant on those. I tightened up my stabilizer arms on the three-point hitch, and I believe that has helped as far as the mower taking these radical swings when I when I lift it up and get it out of its bind. doing a great job, isn't it? mainly watching the inside of the mower here to determine what height I want to run. If the inside of the mower is off the ground, I try to lower it. The outside of the mower is in flow, so it's going to find its level. Not level, but it's going to find its coming height. No worries. Who was worried? You weren't worried, were you? Nah. How much pond bank do you have to mow? How much ditch bank do you have to mow? I think that's going to be the question you're asking yourself right now. Maybe in how much do you hate weeding? This mower, well, like anything that we show with this much hydraulics and this much complexity, is not cheap. It's going to be expensive. I don't know the current price right now, but you can find it Woo! on agfolks.com. I'll tell you what, these uh, washouts are not where I want to be. I'm really going to have to fix those somehow. I'm going to try that same washout to get me the heebie-jeebies before they put them in the car. Yeah, being 
ready for it helps a lot. It rained us out, unfortunately. I was hoping to get maybe one or two more rounds. Uh, it's getting more difficult each round, so those would have been the most exciting from a video standpoint. But what we're looking at here is the business end of the mower. I, a lot of times you guys kind of gripe at me for not showing this portion of a flail mower, and I understand, I sometimes forget to. Well, since this one is up and easy to access, we'll show it. Uh, this is what we call the Y blades, or the, the knives. Okay, so these are different than the hammers that are on the rest of my flail mowers. This is the only one I have with these type of blades. They're intended for a, a little bit lighter grass, not as heavy a brush as, say, uh, the hammers are, from my understanding. I'm not actually sure that there's that much difference, so I hate to get into that too much. It may be uh, six of one, half a dozen of, other, of the other, I don't know. I thought they were all supposed to be the same length, and then I see that I've got one that's much shorter than the others. At first I thought, well, you know, I see a little damage on this one. Maybe I've already cut the end off of it, but when I look close here, I believe I see paint right there. So I wonder if they use a shorter one to balance the unit if it's if it's out of balance in one place. I don't I don't know. I do see some, some damage already, right? I don't know if I've hit rocks. I know that I probably did hit some rocks. Uh, try to be careful. But I do see more damage on these, I would say, than on the hammers uh, that I've used on the other flail. Cutting width is a little less than 32 inches. They probably call it 32 inches. It's all I would want, quite frankly, on this particular tractor. On the front side, they've got these flaps that you hardly ever see when you're running it. They just kind of run like this. And the idea is to keep stuff from, from being thrown out the front of the mower. And then otherwise they, they fold back if, if they need to. This will run in both directions, which is unique. The PTO versions won't run in both directions, right? They've got it such that one direction is locked out at a time, so you can't quickly go from forward to reverse, which is probably a good safety feature. But uh, if you do want to run it in reverse, you, you move the main lockout lever to the other direction and then you can you can run it in reverse. I'm really not sure why you would want it to run it in reverse. You can. The boom arm looks a little like a backhoe, right? I mean, you've got the main boom, you've got what we would call the dipper stick, uh, and then you've got the bucket itself, right? Well, the one thing that's missing is the ability to rotate. So other than that, it's a lot like a backhoe. One thing I see that's unique on this one that I haven't seen on a lot, there's no mechanical locks that I have found to keep this thing from going down or going up on its own, but what it does have is hydraulic locks. So manual hydraulic locks, you get it all folded up the way you want it to go down the road, and then you can flip these. I think there are three of them, one for each cylinder. I think there's one on the other side, yeah, for this one here. So. Keeping all of those open, then you, can, then you can operate it from the tractor. All of the hydraulics for this machine are internal to it. There's a PTO hydraulic pump, and then, as you saw, the set of levers uh, are attached to the tractor. They're cable-driven back here, and so each of the hydraulic valves are self-contained. You don't need any rear hydraulics on your tractor to operate this mower. All you need is a three-point hitch and a PTO. Horsepower requirements, I'm not even sure what's in the spec, but I'm not too worried about horsepower requirements because any tractor that's going to be heavy enough to safely operate this is likely going to have enough horsepower. Uh, the 2038R, I didn't ever feel any horsepower problems with what I was mowing. Uh, it was more a case of, you know, do you have a, a enough weight, a wide enough tractor? You know, I'd have felt a lot more comfortable if I had a tractor that was twice as wide and twice as heavy. Uh, I wouldn't be opposed to running this on a 2038R, um, but we just have to be careful. What I see is anytime you've got one of these offset, heavy offset implements like this, um, you, you have to have the tractor almost level. Five degrees maybe, when you get to 15 degrees, it's not comfortable anymore. And then as you see here, we kind of get it, yeah, stuck. 
And when I say stuck, it's not like it's, you have to get something else to pull it out, but you do have to stop mowing, bring the mower in, and, and focus totally on getting your tractor out of its bind. Several grease points at each of these joints. There are grease points at bearings on both ends. Uh, that's all I have found. It's, it doesn't look too difficult to maintain. Well, I hadn't noticed this till I was gonna show you uh, this PTO pump, but sure enough, even though I had it chained to the lift arm, I must not have had it chained tight enough because it's been up my PTO shield. So I will have to figure out how to get that twisted back around and, uh, and fixed and straighten out my PTO shield. So yeah, anytime I try a new attachment, I, I risk uh, tearing something up. And I suspect this is just a situation where I needed that uh, snug. I needed it a little tighter so that it wouldn't spin uh, under operation. Now, having said that, this pump looks to be pretty tough. It's a bigger looking pump than what I'm used to seeing for something like this, longer, so I'm assuming it's a little higher volume than what I'm used to, to operating. Let's talk about some negatives. Specifically on the pump, the PTO connection is much more difficult than I would like to see. It is the worst style that I have encountered. Let me see if I can get it off to where you can, to where the viewers can see it. <clears throat> I cut my finger here and with that blood thinner that I'm on, uh, yeah, any little cut just bleeds and bleeds and bleeds. I want to show you here one of the disadvantages of, of this particular pump and PTO connection. This is one of the worst, in my opinion, PTO connections I've seen. You have to pull the whole thing forward, and there are three little balls in there that have to be pulled forward all at the same time while you're trying to push it on to the shaft. I, I, I guess I'm kind of spoiled. Uh, the flex wing and bat wing mowers that I have both have uh, rings that catch themselves, I, mean, I don't, there, there's probably a term, but they latch so that you can get it in connection position and they stay latched until you get it on the PTO shaft where it can essentially lock itself in and then it automatically unlatches. That's what we need. Or for sure we don't need one of these rings that you have to have all three sides of it moved. The, I worked and worked at this and the only way that I found to make it work, I may not have my little pliers at the right size here, but I took my Nipex and I put them in there like this and, and held it open with my Nipex. That's the only way I could get this to work, okay? Because I, I had it in there like that and then I was able to slide it on. You've heard me have mixed feelings about this product, but I think I'm gonna show it in this particular case because this is a great time to use it. This is called the PTO link, uh, tractorptolink.com. Uh, some of the disadvantages uh, of this product uh, have to do with mowers and tillers with really short shafts. Those disadvantages don't apply here because uh, this has variable length. It's, it's not an issue if it's a little bit longer. But in this case, I can probably get that held out and be able to get that shaft in see fairly easily. The difficulty was holding this entire weight and trying to get it up to the tractor. The other end of the tractor PTO link is much easier to use. You know, you don't, again, you don't have much weight here. You can get it on the tractor. Then when you come to put them together, you know, you, it's, it's, it's really easy to slide together. In fact, the other disadvantage of the PTO link is needing to rotate it like this to get it connected. And that's not a problem with a, a, a PTO pump like this or a water pump on a sprayer. Both of those are very difficult to hook up because it's so heavy on the backside. TractorPTOLink.com, uh, use code TTWT. It wasn't my intent to actually mention that in this video, but I just thought of it. It would have made this project, this particular attachment, a lot easier. So you wish you'd have thought of it. I wish I'd have thought of it. Would have saved me some effort here. And it might have kept my uh, shield from bending, Christy. Yeah. But yeah, I'm, I'm not happy with this. Uh, this. This could have been done better, and uh, I think it was an attempt to make an improvement. Really, the only thing that would need to change is a temporary latch, 
when you pull it out, latch it, and then it would be fine. You could, you could slide it in. I think when I hook this back up, I'll use the tractor PTO link, just to see what it looks like and see if it truly is easier. I think it will be. We still have this little sideways rotation that we have to do. See, I have to pick it up, take all the weight off that to try to rotate. There it went. And this time I'm going to tighten it up tight. Yeah, that's right. I always do it right the second time. Here's a perfect use for the safety lock. So I do have the mower held up. So if it fell on me, it wouldn't be pleasant. By changing this safety lock, the only vulnerable parts are from here to here, right? So the cylinder has to somehow fail or this banjo fitting has to, it's just not gonna fail, right? No hydraulic hose is gonna burst and cause this uh, to drop. So it does, it's a, it's a nice safety feature. The complex parts of this particular attachment are done very well. It's the simple things that, that I'm frustrated with, right? The actual PTO connection. The other one I wanna point you to is the three-point hitch connection. Uh, it's not quick hitch compatible. Okay, that's a, a pet peeve of mine on its own. There's no reason for it not to be quick hitch compatible. But additionally, the two lift arm links are very narrow. They are much more narrow than uh, a standard category one. This is 22 inches right here. It's, it's just, it's, it's too narrow. And I, I don't understand why it wouldn't be wider, the 27, 28, whatever is required for a quick hitch because that would provide a little more stability, I think, on the, on the product. So there's not a good reason that I can understand technically that they would be so narrow. Secondly, you'll notice that my top link, my power top link is totally extended. And yet the attachment's leaning forward. Yeah, and that's because this top link connection is a good four inches behind just eyeballing it, I believe it's at least four and a half inches, maybe five inches vertically behind the lift links. So that's not very good as well. It's gonna make it difficult for, for anyone with a standard top link or a hydraulic top link even to be able to get this uh, to operate level. And you can tell that in the video, you can see that it's always leaning forward. I would like to see this out. I would like to see it quick hitch compatible. I'd like to see these hoses positioned in a way that they're not in the way of the three-point connection. Just small things like that is what I'm complaining about here. These are easily fixable by the manufacturer if they just prioritize that. So it's not really a complaint about the mower once it's hooked up, but the connection process could be a lot better. While I'm talking about the three-point hitch, I wish there was some vertical adjustment on this side over here, or at least one side, so that we could handle the heaviness of the attachment on its right side, you would call it. Um, I've cranked this uh, right side lift arm way up out of level uh, to keep the attachment running level, and that's just because of the way the linkage works. The, the left-hand side of the tractor is, is pushed upward, the right-hand side is carrying all the weight. So you have to, you have to lift, uh, you know, basically shorten this turnbuckle all the way. I would really like to see that handled by the attachment a little bit so that you could leave your tractor three-point hitch level. Built-in parking stands, I find this very nice. It allows us to park the machine. We don't have to like put blocks under it. Uh, it seems to balance nicely when parked. I don't have a feeling that it's gonna tip over when it's unhooked. So uh, that's a, a very nice feature and it's, they're real long and they're balanced appropriately. They know where the weight's gonna be, and so if you'll notice, it's offset quite, uh, quite some amount here to be able to provide good stability. Overall, this is a unique attachment, and it has a place for some of you viewers. Not all of you, right? It's gonna be expensive. It's gonna be good for someone who's got maybe uh, an area that's, uh, say, six or eight feet really steep downward or upward. You can mow up or down with it where you can leave your tractor on a level surface and yet mow over a bank, right? You could see that on one side of the pond, we were gonna be able to reach all of it. If you have 15 feet of steep slope, a longer angle way out there, 
you're not going to be able to reach it all, as we saw on the other side of the pond, right? So it's, it's, you can't have your tractor tipped and, and use this thing out to the side even further. That's the same way every offset mower that we've tried so far has worked. And, and so you've got just a certain amount of length. And if you're within that length, it works wonderfully. Uh, if you've got a road ditch or something kind of straight that is too steep to mow, this is good for it because, again, it's, it's easy to control. When there becomes a lot of turns and, and undulations in the, the uh, topography, that's going to be more difficult. You've got several controls you have to control. They really only operate one at a time. That's, that's what they stated at the farm show and the, and the other version that we saw. And I think this one is pretty much uh, the same way. So you've got one control at a time. Only one of the three floats, that's, that's the deck itself, the, the roller itself that's mowing. And for the most part, that works well. Uh, the boom is what I controlled the up and down with all the time. So really, as long as I was going slowly, I didn't have any issue uh, once I just spent just a few minutes uh, practicing with the mower. You can get this mower at agfolks.com. You can get it at other Moschio Gaspardo dealers. Um, if you need it, you know it. And if you don't need it, you know it. If you're on the fence, well, we'll try to show it in another episode if we can, or maybe two, or maybe three, who knows. Uh, but maybe you can, you can see more and more of it in action, and that'll help you decide. A lot of this is the angle of the tractor. And I don't mean the sideways angle, though that doesn't feel very good at times. I'm talking about the, this angle of the tractor, and that allows the mower to stick a lot further out. So this is just a job that requires patience. Take your time, don't get yourself in a bind. You'll learn your machine. You'll, you'll learn what doesn't feel right. Take, take your time on that rather than just diving headlong, literally, into the pond. I'm a lot more confident with it now than I was just the first two passes around the pond. You doing okay watching this? No. You're not? No. I think I'm pushing it, huh? Uh, yeah. It makes me sick to my stomach a little bit. I wouldn't be uh, driving like that. Well, I have my pucker factor, and then there's the camera lady pucker factor. Yeah. That'll do it. I think so. I think when we go to redo the pond, we'll have to figure out what slope is good that you can mow without me having the pucker factor. <laughs> yeah, I was actually going to blame the pond maintenance crew for having so much of that just go out there on and on right about surface level, but I haven't found any of those employees to be able to blame. No. They, I don't know, they've kind of... Quit. <laughs> They're on strike. Ne never started, I think. Right. Yeah, we, we can't blame the mower for not being able to reach way out of there halfway no. into the pond where we got grass growing. We've nope. got to dig that thing out or fill it in one. I, uh, we're, we're still leaning to digging it out, but uh, yeah. I, I, don't think you can, I don't think you can ask a mower to get out there any further. I don't know how I'm going to mow that. Maybe I could back the TS-10 off in there. I like the TS-10 too much. <laughs> so I think we've done all, all we can do with this mower. I really don't know how to get the rest of that without a weed eater. So Christy, as soon as we get off here, maybe you can get a weed eater and get out there and get that cleaned up. Ha uh ha. -huh. I'd need some pretty big muck boots. You might get stuck in there. I might, or my shoes might. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time on Tractor, Tractor Time, time with, with 10. 10. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow from within them. Let's see if I get my mouth right in the, am I doing the Wilson? Yeah, yeah, that's good.